Hi. <laughs> Please stop me if you can't hear me because, yeah, anyway. Um, so I'm William, um, I'm from Gandhi. And uh, so I'm here to present you the, this project, uh, Virtual uh, Network Over Tool, we did uh, uh, at Gandhi. So I hope your brain is still alive because uh, you already had uh, some uh, great uh, presentations uh, before. And uh, this one uh, will be also uh, quite uh, technical. So let's start. Uh, virtual Network Over Tool. So some uh, background first. Uh, Probably that most of you uh, know uh, Gandhi. Uh, no, is a uh, Gandhi is a, um, a French uh, domain name registrar um, who have been here uh, for uh, many years, and we are also uh, hosting. We are also selling hosting services uh, since uh, 2008. We have uh, two different offers. Um, so pass uh, for platform as a service. And also uh, a YAS platform, uh, infrastructure as a service. Today I'm going to talk uh, more about uh, YAS, so uh, infrastructure as a service, since uh, this project uh, was first uh, designed uh, with uh, this infrastructure. So let's start with the first uh, picture, which is uh, we did represent. Uh, what we can call a conventional data center with uh, three usual uh, network layer, uh, so core layers, aggregation layer, access layer. And at the very bottom, uh, you have the servers. So the servers are the uh, physical machine uh, which are uh, responsible to host uh, the virtual machines. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I will try to use the uh, name uh, nodes uh, for this uh, physical, uh, physical machine. That's uh, how we are used to uh, call them. OK. Uh, next. Um, so this project, uh, the main goal of this project is about having uh, what we call a large uh, multi-tenancy uh, network. So uh, at Gandhi, you have uh, you have the possibility so to buy your virtual machines. You have uh, several services uh, like uh, this snapshotting, air proxy, etc. But today we are going to talk about network. Um, so a large multi-tenancy network uh, is what what we can we call um, so. A data center where, where you have a common infrastructure used by uh, lots of users using the same um, using the same uh, infrastructure. So here you have the customers uh, accessing um, the usual way uh, to access their VM today are uh, through a public IP address, as you see. Uh, each customer has several uh, virtual machines. Uh, so as you can see, uh, you have different calls. They are all, uh, uh, some of them are connected between each other. Um, so before this project, uh, we didn't have any real solution to solve uh, this, uh, this need. In fact, our customers uh, were used to uh, set up some uh, weird thing like uh, SSH tunnels or uh, VPN or whatever. I, I don't know uh, what, we, what, uh, what else, but we had to find uh, a solution for that. Next. So um, the requirement uh, about uh, this project is to be able uh, to get to, to keep this uh, same requir requirements. So for example, uh, you have uh, CMV C seamless VM mobility. Um, we need to be able to uh, move the virtual machines uh, in all the nodes in order to fix our kernel, to fix, uh, um, to, to, to put some upgrades. We also need, of course, an easy management, uh, an easy uh, scaling, because it's based on a very flat network, so we need to be able uh, to extend it. 
Um, for trail resilience, of course, uh, when you have an issue, uh, it should be fixed uh, by itself. And also VLAN scalability. So we will come back uh, with this uh, later. Next. Uh, so all the challenges uh, of this network is hidden under the layer 2. So as I already said, we have some switching, some benefits, some switching benefits. So as I said, management simplified, seamless VM mobility, being able to add new nodes as, as we want, being able to add new switches and doing nothing else. But the interesting part of the project um, is about the limitation, because we try to resolve some issues, of course. So, um, months after months, you get more and more virtual machines. Uh, each virtual machine has a virtual interface, uh, one or more virtual interface. Uh, as I said, the default one is usually uh, a public one, a public, uh, with a public IP. Um, as long as you add uh, virtual interfaces, you will get more and more MAC addresses. So at the end, uh, you will some t uh, at some point end up in a TCAM workflow. So the, your switches will have to learn more and more MAC addresses. And so uh, the tables will become full. The logical point, the next one, is about ARP uh, tr uh, traffic. So all your virtual interfaces will start to talk and generate ARP traffic. And uh, we, you will probably end up uh, in an ARP storm, what we call an uh, ARP storm. Next point is about STP. So the spanning tree protocol, the, the usual issue when you have two redundant paths, your uh, port will be blocked, for example. Uh, when a link is going down, you will have to wait some time until you find a new path to recalculate a new path so you can uh, send your traffic. And the last point is uh, about uh, VLAN scalability. Uh, a few words um, about VLAN scalability. scalability. So a quick, a quick solution could have been to open very small data center where you put your customers, you put virtual machines they want, you put uh, what we can call a uh, customer VLAN, so set up uh, VLANs. Um, but when your data center will be full, it means uh, no more VLANs available. So li the limit is uh, uh, 4096 defined in uh, the RFC uh, for, um, in the protocol um, 801.2Q. Uh, um, 802.1Q, sorry. <laughs> um, you will have to open a new one when your, data, your first data center is full. You will have, open, uh, you will have to open a new data center. And and so on. After a few years, if uh, one of your customers want to modify its infrastructure, uh, that is to say adding new VLANs or adding a new machines in your full data center, you will not be able to fulfill its demands since uh, it's full. So it's not a solution. So that's uh, the limitations of the project uh, we, try to, we try to resolve. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the first picture uh, about um, the regular data center we have today. And what we did propose for, uh, for this project so is to transform this uh, data center in what we call a tree-based data center. So here, that's a logical view of the data center. I mean, that we didn't change anything in the physical equipment. Um, so we still have the exact same equipment, but we added a new device called Airbridge. This new device was added in our case 
on the nodes and the hypervisor. So here is the view what we can call um, uh, sorry, I don't uh, fabric network. Uh, usual, uh, useful words uh, to 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 show you uh, to define that. Um, so we'll go to the next point to explain a bit more about Trill now. So Trill stands for a transparent. Uh, um, uh, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Interconnections uh, with lot of links. I, I've always difficulties to remind uh, <laughs> the signification of this word. But anyway, who cares? Uh, so as I said, uh, we defined a new uh, device uh, called Airbridge. Uh, this Airbridge is um, composed uh, with uh, two uh, plane: the control plane and the uh, data plane. So basically, the control plane is um, the one responsible uh, for exchanging information between air bridges about uh, the link states uh, between air bridges. And of course, that the data plane is uh, responsible uh, for uh, transporting uh, users' data. The, li the next point, uh, the next important point uh, about uh, Trill is about um, encapsulation and decapsulations. So we did put the average on the nodes. So what does that mean? On the switch side, uh, if, you, if you have a regular switch, I mean, which don't support uh, Trill, they will not see anything about uh, your Trill traffic. So this will be regular traffic. So you will not have any new overhead on your switches, on your physical switches. The next thing is about the virtual machines. So the virtual machines will send regular packets and will receive, receive regular packets. OK. What do we have now? Yeah, about ETF standards. Uh, so Trill is uh, defined with those RFCs, if you are interested in. It's important to know that we didn't invent anything uh, with Trill. It's uh, all uh, defined on, on those RFCs. Uh, maybe you are already using uh, Trill on uh, other on uh, network equipments. Uh, I know that, for example, uh, Cisco is already selling uh, Trill equipments. But we didn't have any uh, Linux implementation. So that w uh, that's what we did. OK. Um, I guess we are done here. So now the interesting part to better understand uh, this whole thing is about uh, defining a bit more about the design and implementation. OK, so now we are going to start. As I said, the average is defined uh, with the control plane and the data plane. So first, let's start with the most uh, important part, which is the control plane. We are going to go through a small example uh, to better un understand what's going on. So here you have uh, eight bubbles uh, from N1 to N8. Uh, they represent nodes, physical nodes. On each node, you have an average. You have uh, several links between uh, some, uh, some. And we are going to build what we call a trill for reading table. That's also be, uh, could be named uh, the neighbor's table. So, when you, uh, so here we are in a unicast building. In a unicast building, when you need to send a packet, you need to know to who you are going to, to, to send the packet. So first, you need to build this neighbor's table. In this example, we are going to start with N2, so the node 2. The first iteration is quite simple. In fact, the, the rule here to build this table is um, the shortest path. So here we have N2, starting from N2 here. And we just add the one directly connected, so N3 and N1. 
quite uh, simple to understand. The next iteration, so we know now that we have N3 and N1. Now we can discover uh, so N7, N8, N4, and N5. So directly connected here and directly connected here. To those uh, we discovered in the first iteration. OK. Next. So now you have N6 remains. N6 remains. Here you have two possible paths. From N2, you can go through N3, N7, and then N6. Or you can go from so N2, N1, N5, and N6. So I say that uh, we are choosing the shortest path, but here we have two um, pass with the same cost. So what do we do? We will add uh, the, the two possibilities. So that's the bi a big difference with the spanning tree protocol. Since if you have uh, two um, paths with the same cost, we will add the two possible paths. So what does that mean? It means that if you have a links going down, we will just use the other one. The conclusion is, if you need to make your uh, network stronger uh, with Trill, you just need to add new links. For example, we could have added a links between N2 and N6 to have a different link. If it fails, we will have the two possible, uh, the two possible paths. OK. So yeah. That's what I just said about N6, uh, with the information added at the, at the end, with the next op MAC, MAC address. And now, we are going to switch to a multicast example. So in STP, we are talking about um, a broadcast. But in the Trill RFC, it's called multicast. So here, the example is, is the exact same, but we will start from N1. And w the rule will be the same. So the shortest path. So what do we have? Sorry. Uh, from N1, we have N5, uh, N8, and N2 directly connected. So we'll add it to the, to the tree. Next. The next iteration is about adding all uh, the nodes connected to the bottom. So it's quite straightforward. So N7, N6, N4, and N3. Uh, what can I say uh, here? Um, in the, um, um, with the comparison with STP again, here you have uh, uh, N6 and N7. They are directly connected, as you see. There is a link here. But in a multicast example, you will not send packets directly. You will have to go through N5, N1, and N8 in order to contact N7. That's very important compared to STP because um, it will avoid loops. You have to follow the multicast tree. OK, we are done with the control plane, I guess. Now, the logical uh, point is about data plane. So that's another example. Uh, I like to, to give an example to explain things. Um, f to explain the data plane, here we have a kind of different example. So here are nodes, so physical server. Uh, this physical server uh, have uh, air bridges. And you also have switches here. But the difference is uh, on the switches, you also have uh, an air bridge. So that's what I said uh, at the beginning, that uh, you can find uh, on the market uh, uh, Twill on existing um, 
switches. Okay, so we are going to start uh, to send packets from uh, VM1 to VM6, which are, which are on different nodes. So first iteration, we'll send a regular packet. So MAC addresses, sender receiver, and IP addresses, sender receiver, and then the data. So as I already said that the VM, you don't have to modify anything uh, on your virtual machine since the encapsulation will be will be done in the next iteration. So in the next iteration, your first bridge on your node will encapsulate your packet and add the trill header. So first, MAC addresses, sender receiver, nicknames, and the regular packets. Nicknames are an information uh, on air bridges. This will identify the air bridges. Each uh, air bridge has its own nickname. Okay, next uh, iteration. Uh, so, as I said, there is another uh, air bridge. The, the, this air bridge will just change the MAC addresses, sender, receiver. But it will not change anything about the bridge, uh, the, the nickname, sorry. It's always the same, sender, receiver, in order to know uh, where we are going. So, and uh, as usual, the regular packet. And then, quite simple, we decapsulate the packet. So the VM6 will receive the packet, a regular packet. And uh, it doesn't know about uh, tool. OK. Now, a bit more technical stuff. Here, uh, we thought it could be interesting to show you uh, how we did the implementation uh, on the Linux kernel. So here you have uh, the flow chart uh, of the implementation. Um, we already saw the unicast uh, example. So at first, we, we check if this is a multicast packet. And so it's, uh, it's quite simple. If the, is the destination is local, we will be able to, uh, to encapsulate the packet. Um, so next, about uh, multi multicast. We can have a look at it. Um, OK, after making a copy, we will forward to all the virtual interfaces. That's very important because after, I will talk again about it. And after this, we check what we call a deterrent, if a deterrent is elected uh, before sending a packet. I told you uh, before in the previous slide that each time you are sending a multi cast packet, sorry, uh, I did, uh, sorry. Each time you are sending, uh, sorry, a multicast packet, you are you have to follow this, uh, this uh, topology, see this, um, this forwarding table, sorry. So in this example, the DT route would be N1. So in fact, the DT route is responsible for all the multicast traffic. So is uh, you need to have a DT route in order to avoid loops. So it, if you don't have one, you just drop the packet. Next. OK, maybe you did follow my presentation. <laughs> maybe you are not asleep. And you did understood that we did, uh, we did resolve some of the points. So that's one of the first slides we saw. You have now an average on your node. So now your virtual interface will send regular packets, but your switches will not know your, the MAC addresses of your virtual interfaces. So we will resolve this, the first issue. We don't see the MAC addresses uh, on the switches anymore. The next point is about STP. As I said, um, you just have to add new links between your nodes in order to make your uh, your network more stronger. 
um, it will lose uh, the, diff the different available paths. But the last thing is we didn't talk about VLANs at the moment. So we are going to talk about it uh, now because we didn't resolve this issue about 4096 uh, limitation. Okay. So what we did at Gandhi, in order to solve this uh, problem, we took a drill and we added a tag. This tag is called VNI for Virtual Network Identifier. So it, it, it comes to virtual ne network over trail. This will help us resolve the last issue. OK, let's have a look at the uh, regular original et Ethernet frame you have in green. I guess most of you already know that. And in blue, you have the trail header. In fact, it's called now a VNT uh, header since you added a VNI tag, which is uh, coded on 24 byte bits, sorry. So now it means that with this additional tag, you are able uh, to scale up to 16 million VLANs. It's already written that we also did resolve the broadcasted flugging issue, but we'll talk about it in a minute. What about VNI now? We are going through an example again uh, to talk about the VNI. So I will go uh, very quickly on this slide because what's important to know here is the VNI has different states. So just remember that you have, for example, in green, the supported state. In fact, when you are adding a VNI to your virtual interface, the local bridge will add the VNI as locally supported. And then we will see what's going on about the discovered and forwarded state. Next, about uh, the same example. I guess you do remember this example. So that's the uh, exact same example as before. We have uh, eight nodes uh, from N1 to N8. Same topologies, same links. So we already built uh, the neighbors table the for a multicast tree. Here, the difference is we have now the VNI. We have the possibility to have a VNI tag. So here are an N2, we are going to add a virtual machine called A with a VNI1. So as I said, the average on N2 will start uh, marked, will mark actually uh, the VNI1 as locally supported. And it will start sending the information around on all nodes uh, following this multicast tree. So now the multicast tree, the all the nodes, are know about VNI1. So they now are all gray. So that's a discovered state. They all know that N2 is supporting VNI1. But for now, since you don't have any uh, other VNI1, you don't need to do anything on the multicast tree any, anywhere else, because who cares about VNI1 since you just have one virtual interface interface uh, supporting VNI1. OK, so that's the exact same picture as before. But now we will add here a VMB with the exact same VNI, so VNI1. So now N6 will start doing the same thing an, as N2. It will start sending the information. So first, this will tag uh, locally as the VNI has supported, so in yellow. And then it will start sending the information on all the, no all the other nodes. 
So what happened on N5 and N1? N1 and N5 already received the information uh, from N2. So since they got the information two times, they are going to mark VN VNI1 as forwarded. This will make the communication possible between all these nodes. The difference is now we can remove all the nodes nodes around here. So we will end up in this in with this simple tree in the case of VNI1. So when you are sending packets, multicast packets from N2, you will just need to uh, send packets uh, to N1, N5, and N6. All your other nodes will never see any packets uh, from your multicast. That's really important that because it will make, in a sort of way, your network more healthier. I mean, your all other nodes will never receive any uh, useless packets. Okay, I guess I'm done here with the finite topology building. So let's go back to the implementation. Um, so that's the uh, exact same implementation, uh, but with the VNI added. That's quite simple. Here we, in the Milky Ticast example, we had uh, forwarding copy to all virtual interfaces. In the Milky Ticast example, on a sending port. Here, now we are going to send all the packets to the virtual switch, what we call a virtual switch. So the virtual switch is uh, all the virtual interfaces uh, which are supporting the VNI in question. Um, I already talked about uh, Ditterroot, and so before sending your packets, of course, you add a VNI tag. And the receiving part is quite simple too. Uh, you just check when you receive a packet, you just need to check if the VNI is supported. Uh, same uh, for uh, unicast or uh, multicast. Okay. Now, let's have a look at uh, Linux spec feature. So here you have uh, the Linux implementation. Uh, I mean, to show you how things are organized. Um, maybe you can't see the different color here, but anyway, it's important to note that we didn't uh, invent, we didn't uh, code a new uh, average, but we did implement it in the current, uh, in the existing uh, Linux bridge. Mm, and of course that now we also can use the BRCTL, the existing BRCTL tool in order to communicate uh, with the bridge. You have the Trilly Diamond, which is, uh, I mean, the control plane uh, here. And it's uh, exchanging information um, uh, with the Linux kernel uh, through a netlink. Okay, here we don't have any Vienna information, but that's not important in this picture. I mean, it's to better understand how things are organized um, for the following demonstration. And now, um, yeah, let's have a look at the small demonstration uh, in order to have a better look how it works. Uh, how things really works. So here in this example, you have uh, several servers. Uh, so from server one to server six, there are nodes with uh, some VMs, so VM one, VM three, VM two, and VM four. You have uh, regular switches without any average. So not tricky things uh, in this example. Uh, yeah, let's start. So, yeah, I did register the, the demonstration since uh, you know that every time you try to do a, demonst a live demonstration, you can't access your uh, your company uh, network or whatever. I don't know. 
but so we did a, a small screen scan, a screen screen test uh, <laughs> in order to access it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's start it. Um, okay, is it uh, no? Let's start from the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Here we have civil shell. So remember the 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 pictures before. We have uh, VM4, VM2. Um, nothing else. Just a shell on server three. In fact, uh, can go back to the picture here. So here we have se all this is already set up in the in the demonstration, but nothing on server three. So you don't have any VM one, VM three. There are nothing running on uh, server three, just a uh, regular shell. So okay, let's start. So here we are uh, going to see what's going on. Uh, what I just said, we are talking to Tuldela right now. Uh, we just did, uh, uh, we just uh, uh, started a question to the Trilde daemon in order to know what's going on on the network. So here you have, as I said, server 2, server 4, server 5 and server 6 already configured, so they have the Trilde diamond running, so they have already exchanged information about uh, uh, ab about the forwarding table, etc. Uh, yeah, now the, di uh, the priority, I can give some word about it. Uh, here you have, we are, we are questioning server one. Server one is the DT root. Remember, DT root is the one responsible for multicast packet. Uh, so there is an election. This election is based uh, on a priority. You have this one. So server one has been set up uh, with a, an higher priority, which was uh, put by hand. And the other have a regular, uh, the same common uh, priority. You could uh, set the priority as you want, uh, because if you need to uh, give a particular, a particular machine uh, the DT route, you can do this. If you have the same priority everywhere, we will do an election depending on the MAC addresses. OK. Next. Let's see. Uh, now we are done with this. We know what's going on. Uh, let's see what's going on server three. As I said, there is nothing running, so no answer. Uh, everything is normal for now. So we are going to see what can we do on server three in order to set up our, our demonstration. Uh, what I've done here is uh, double checking if the truly daemon is not running. Who knows? Maybe uh, an issue. Uh, so nothing running. Here you have uh, the uh, the bridge called XenBR0, the regular uh, Xen bridge. And we are starting. So before uh, starting the Trilde daemon, uh, you have uh, not full functionality. And then you start your Trilde daemon, and then of course your bridge uh, now know about Trill. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to show you a little bit about the information you can see on server three. So I talked about the uh, forwarding table as an example, or yeah, first the nickname database. Uh, the nickname database uh, we already saw it on server one, but now let's have a look from server three. So that's the exact same thing, that you have uh, server one with the higher priority. You don't have any VNI supported at the moment, since uh, we, don't, we, we didn't do anything at the moment. OK. Priority is set up. Let's have a look at the forwarding table. 
and we did it in several examples. So I did a question, Trinity Diamond, but there is no nothing f at the moment. Indeed, uh, to have this information, you have to wait some time. In fact, you have an hello from each average uh, every uh, 30 seconds by default, so you have to wait uh, 60 seconds uh, to have the forwarding table, all the information you need. Uh, it's quite interesting to note that uh, even if you have uh, lots of nodes, it always be uh, 60 seconds since you have to wait uh, to hello uh, to in order to have all the information you need in the tool uh, case. So now, um, it's going to happen in a minute. Uh, we are going to see the tool forwarding table. Okay, let's, uh, let's have a look. Here you have the next op Mac as, they, as in, in the example. But you can see that you have all the same Mac addresses from and server one is the server one MAC addresses to server six, server five, and four. Why? Because we have a different one on, on server two. So we can go back to the picture. Here you can see that with the network we did, we have to go for N4, N5, and six. You have to go through this switch and server one in order to communicate with server two and server three. So the next op will always be server one uh, in order to communicate between each other for this nodes. Um, okay. Ooh. Next, what we are going to do? Yeah. So now um, we have uh, to set up uh, the VM. Remember that. You have uh, two VM on server three, VM one and VM three. So, at Gandhi, for now, we are using the Xen technology. So that's why this example is uh, with Xen. So that's only Xen tools. You don't care uh, at the moment. Just the creation of virtual machine. So it started. Now let's go on the serial console uh, of the virtual machine from VM one here. Uh, here it's going to be VM3, and you still have uh, VM4, VM2. So login on the serial console. Uh, let's see what we are. Yeah, we, we need to set up, of course. You have already a virtual interface, but it's not set up. So we need to do it. So it's quite logical. We'll uh, put the address dot three and dot one in order to uh, find them. Uh, now, I'm going to ping server 2, I guess, in order to make sure that uh, everything is working. So, yeah, I'm going to switch, switch that. Yeah, Server 2, it's working. So, we have a communication between uh, VM3 and VM2. But now, um, I'm going to send multicast packet, because for now, you remember uh, that we didn't set up any VNI anywhere. So you should have um, some noise on your network. I'm going to send some broadcast packets from VM3. So let's see a TCP dump to see what's going on on the other's uh, VM. So you do have uh, something on all VMs. We'll show, yeah. All VMs are receiving your multicast packets. It's quite normal regarding uh, your multicast tree. Okay. Now, let's go back to the VNI. So we are going to add a VNI, so you can see that. Uh, um, yeah, we did, just uh, to show you, uh, well, we did also patch the documentation, of course, that we have several new commands in the BSCTL command. So it will set, uh, set VNI, del VNI, and show a virtual switch. We are going to add a VNI on uh, the VN2, which is hosted on uh, server 2. 
So let's see. Uh, so so set VNI on the bridge you are running. It's called XenBR0 in this example. Uh, and his VIF is named VIF1.0. So 4097 to show you that, of course, we can go up uh, um, 4096. Uh, now you can see that, yeah, we just added uh, the VIF, and then now you don't have anything on the other, so VM1 and VM4 is not receiving anything else, but VM2 is also receiving anything. It's quite normal because we just added to only to VM2. So in order to uh, have the packets coming from VM3 to VM2, we need to, of course, set up uh, the VNI on VM3, like the previous example uh, we, we saw. So the exact same stuff, exact same VNI. And yeah, it's working again between VM3, VM3 and VM2. OK. Now, what's going on? Hmm. Wait some time. Yep, next, 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 <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so now we are going to set up the same thing for uh, VM1. So now there is a communication uh, with uh, VM1. We are going to have a look at the forwarding table, uh, sorry, at the nickname uh, database. Uh, now you can see that you have VNI supported on uh, server 3 and also on server 2. Okay. Now I talked about uh, VM migration. Uh, it's quite important, so I'm going to, to show you a small demonstration. Uh, VM migration. So we are going to mi migrate VM1 to server 2. Show you that uh, it's working uh, as we want it at the beginning. So now you see uh, VM1, you don't see anything because we were logged on the serial console. So we need to log again on the serial console uh, on uh, through server 2 because it has been migrated uh, to server 2. We will see the same exact um, status as before on VM2. So nothing happening for now. Quite normal because we don't have any setup script in order to uh, set up the VNI we set up. So we will do the same thing. So reset the VNI we did before to make the things working again. again. Okay. I guess, yeah, now it's working again on VM2. I guess we are done with this demonstration. Uh, we could have show you some other uh, stuff like uh, DT root, moving the TT root or uh, whatever else. But the important thing to know, to, to understand here, is that there is no uh, manual configuration. You don't need to do anything. Uh, for example, if I'm losing the DT route, uh, there will be another L election. If you want to move manually your DT route, elect another one, you can do it. So will, there will be uh, another uh, topology. Uh. Next, um, we are almost done uh, with this. So it's quite important to note that um, this work is based on a PhD study from Ahmed Amamou. So you have the title of uh, its PhD. And it's also important to know that the uh, project is still in development. Uh, so we need to, to fix uh, some issue we have. We need to clean the code. But we did uh, make uh, the source available on, uh, on this address on GitHub, uh, slash Gandhi, uh, slash Catrill. As you can see, the thing is uh, about VNT, you don't have the VNT uh, code at the moment since uh, we have still uh, two uh, students working on, uh, on these projects and it's still a uh, drive state so they can't uh, release any source at the moment. 
Okay, uh, I'm done with the with this presentation. Uh, thank you very much. But uh, remember that you can uh, find our um, private VLAN uh, infrastructure on your on our existing production. So you can test it if you want on uh, gondi.net slash hosting. And uh, the slides are available uh, on press.gondi.net slash care 2013. Thank you very much. Um, when you explain uh, how the forwarding database was built, you you only uh, show a MAC address. At uh, at which point is uh, ISIS used in the process? Sorry. Uh, at which point in the process of building the forwarding database is uh, ISIS the network uh, protocol, uh, the dynamic protocol used? We used uh, the, the ISIS to extend this information. Sorry, I didn't. Uh, I used the uh, microphone. <laughs> So we are you, we are using the ISIS is 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 uh, protocol in order to exchange uh, this information. Uh, okay, but th there was no level three uh, layer three uh, information. Yes, indeed. Uh, do you mean uh, that uh, three is is inside uh, ISIS? It's a yes. modified version of yes. ISIS. Yes, there is no layer three uh, in, okay. the, in our implementation in the ERC of two. My question was about uh, reliability. You are working for um, a company that hosts many servers. And on your example, what occurs if you are losing server one? Yeah. How do you manage this failure and how can you recover yeah. uh, quickly to get back yeah. to your VMs? That's quite interesting. Uh, in this example, uh, you are right that if I'm losing server one, I will be. Uh, I will lose the communication uh, between VM4 and uh, VM3, or the, all the VMs hosted here and here. There will be no more communications. So it's uh, um, to the administrator to uh, have a look at its uh, at the other links in order to to make uh, I, I don't know to add an uh, a link between server three and uh, server four, for example. Because in this example, if you uh, remove server one, you will get, in fact, uh, two new um, network. Here you will, uh, server six, server five, and server four will elect a new DT route, and they will start talking together. So this will be a new, there will be a new uh, neighbor table, a new multicast uh, table uh, tree. And the same for the users. So it will continue to co to work between uh, between the, the, the one connected, but of course there will be no communication uh, w with the others. But that's quite normal in this example. Uh, just uh, a supplement to that. Just a supplement to that question. Uh, does that mean that you have to provide a redundant, redundant a topology from the start? Mm, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain you, but um, at the beginning, uh, l let's start with the Gandhi example. Uh, in our example, uh, the tree is uh, really simple. I mean, every bridge is seeing each other uh, without any. Uh, Server uh, any bridge uh, in the middle. So when you have this kind of topology, you don't need to to make anything uh, on your network. We did not change anything physically on our network, since you have a very simple tree with uh, the DT route and all the other connected. So if I'm losing the DT route uh, on the Gandhi network, there will be another one elected uh, automatically. Automatically, it already happens sometimes uh, when we need, for example, to, to do some updates. So in, the, in our case, we didn't have to change anything. Uh, depending on the case, yes, you will have to, to double check if you are not in this uh, kind of weird case. But here it was really for an experimentation. So yeah, 
you, you need to to make sure that you have uh, enough link in order to 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 prevent uh, uh, issues. So as I said, you just need to add cables. Uh, you you can add, add cables between your nodes. So it's no problem no problem with that. If you want to make your uh, your network stronger. Left. Um, what is the average uh, number of ops uh, that you observe on your infrastructure uh, using uh, this uh, this uh, mechanic? Here, uh, as I said, we have a really simple uh, inf infrastructure. So you just have one between each other. Every everybody is seeing each other. We don't have any. Uh, 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 in the multicast okay. reel, like uh, we you're saw you're in the example, in the full mesh. In fact, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Because um, I'm a bit concerned by the um, uh, the fact of uh, passing through a number of nodes because yeah. uh, it's uh, it, it adds uh, some traffic to these nodes. Yeah. Yeah. And it could become a bottleneck. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. So you, in this case, you have to 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 be careful about that, and so you just. As I said, you just need to add a new link if you want if you if you want to to redirect this traffic with another link in order to to mitigate uh, the traffic. Okay, thank you. Uh, you say that uh, Cisco was using Twill too. Does this mean that uh, we can? Uh, uh, use Cisco uh, some uh, Cisco Nexus to uh, connect uh, physical machines and uh, integrate it with. Uh yes, yes. Since uh, since uh, we are following the RFC, it should work. Uh, I haven't tested myself. We I guess we didn't uh, test it uh, tested it, but uh, it should work. Yes, since uh, it's following an RFC. But yes, it's uh, theory. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, did you try to to draw a map uh, of uh, this new kind of topology and uh, uh, something like uh, if I, um, you can see that there is only one link on the server one, so you can alert the administrator that uh, it can be a possible failure in the future. Is there any strategy to to draw a map or visualize visualizing the, um, the maybe a point of failure in this new kind of topology? Actually, uh, we talked about it uh, at Gandhi because it's a quite important uh, thing. Uh, there is a draft about uh, administ administration tools to be able uh, to do what you want to do. I mean, to be able to uh, see uh, the failures or uh, to, I don't know, to find a virtual interface easily to be able to, to see what's going on in your network. But uh, you're right that uh, for now there is uh, nothing really uh, ready. It's uh, still a draft uh, under RFC. Okay. No more questions. Thank you, William.